Hello, uh, my name is Liz Williams and I will be showing you how to create a levitation photo. It's pretty easy if you have Adobe Photoshop and a DSLR camera or a point and shoot camera or even just your smartphone. And I'm going to show you how to use your smartphone to create this if you have Adobe Photoshop. It should be easy as a breeze. All right, thanks. Start up your camera and if you have a droid you might have a few more controls than an iPhone but you want to take your auto settings off and go to manual and after you go to manual then you can go and adjust settings to reflect how you want your photo to be. Uh, be aware of your lighting as well as like where you want the focus to be. I want everything to be in focus so instead of having it all the way over in macro or in auto I'm going to have it in infinity over here. And I want to keep this in this realm of focus so that the focus stays locked so when I do my before image it will have the same amount of focus as my after image of me levitating. So aside from that, I'm going to change my uh, white balance to be a little bit warmer. And I think I'm gonna keep the shutter speed around this area here. And my ISO, I'm gonna keep at 100 as well. Cause I, I like my photos to be just a little bit darker. Um, and with those settings, I think I'm ready to go. I just need to go and make my setup. So the lighting in my house is really nice right now. It's about, uh, it's almost six o'clock today. So I'm going to take the photo inside of my living room because that's where I feel the most comfortable during these interesting times. So this is around the area where I'll be levitating and I'm just gonna figure out where to put my phone to uh, reflect that. So from this vantage point, if I don't have a tripod for my phone, which I don't, I'm going to try to utilize the environment that's around me and my bookshelf I think would be the best bet. So I'm just gonna turn on my camera with the settings that I've already established and try to just maneuver this to capture both the ground or the floor as well as myself in the shot. So I'm noticing that the table is blocking this a little bit so I might move the table a little bit more out of the shot. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is take your before shot and you can either use a timer or you can just do a shot as is but I would do it with a 10 second timer or a 3 second timer just so you don't have to worry about the uh, camera or in your phone shifting around. So after you take a photo where you are not in the shot and there's no stool in the shot then you want to take a photo of yourself with the timer at 10 seconds and have yourself in the shop with the stool. And make sure that you don't move the camera because you want both scenes to be seamless. So when you go into Photoshop and you erase the stool, it looks as though nothing has changed in the setting. So now that I have things out of the way and I have a stool here, I'm ready to go and do my pose. So I want to make it seem as though I'm levitating, so I'm going to try to be conscientious of where my feet are pointing. So in order to look like you're floating, you can do either a cross-legged pose similar to this, or you can do something that's a little bit more aerodynamic and kick out your legs a little bit more while reaching for something. And those are my usually, those are usually my go-to 
poses. You could also do something where you look as though you're falling, but that seems a little bit more, uh, a little chancier, possibly more dangerous. But if you're feeling brave and acrobatic, go for it. And uh, we're gonna set a timer of 10 seconds just so I can hold the shot. And after the photo is taken, then I can go get off the stool and transfer the images to my computer. I'm gonna do it via email, but some people might just wanna use like a USB link or this or that to transfer photos from your camera to your computer. And now we're on to our next step, post-production. All right, so we're now in post-production and we're gonna go into our email and open up the photos and click the download button, open with Photoshop, okay, and do that for the next two photos. All right, and once they're all open, I'm gonna get rid of that timeline tab at the bottom because it's taking up a lot of room. Also, I need to decide what photo I want to go with. I think this is the ticket. So I'm going to copy that and paste it onto the before photo that does not have the stool in it. I'm going to close that tab for the timeline and paste that photo of me on a stool. I'm now gonna click on the mask tool, which is that rectangle with a circle in it. And this will allow me to erase in a non-destructive manner. I'm gonna choose the uh, brush tool, which is to the left and it looks like a brush and it's between a band-aid and a clone, I mean a little stamp icon. And after I choose that, I'm gonna choose the uh, black color at the bottom and then I can just go ahead and start painting over the parts I wanna get rid of. It's a, a pretty easy uh, process and it, it's very pleasing to see things go away that I don't want to see. And then if I mess up, I can change that black swatch to white and that will bring back things and you'll see that uh, and a little bit when I start to bring things back again. I'm also going to change the hardness of the brush, and that's what the 76 was, uh, just so I can get into certain spots and it won't look so airbrushed, the parts that I'm trying to, uh, to delete or to erase. Zoom in by pressing Control Plus and checking out what details still need to be uh, altered a little bit. And I'm just going to change the hardness a little bit more to 80% and try to get a little bit closer to my thigh to fix that airbrush disappearance. And also delete the uh, the stool that I keep accidentally bringing back with the white uh, swatch. Also, if you want to quickly switch between black and white, those two colors, uh, once you're on the mask highlight, uh, the mask part of uh, the layers, you can just press X and it will toggle between white and black. Since I can't get rid of this one little spot of the stool, I'm going to go and uh, duplicate my original layer by grabbing and dragging it to the uh, icon next to the trash can on the layer panel that is a duplicate layer icon. And it's basically a square with a plus in the middle. And after I do that, I'm going to add a mask tool and paint over parts that 
I don't need to be seen from the original layer, which is now on top of the layer of me floating. So I'm just gonna mask over that and hopefully the uh, faint image of the stool legs will be gone completely. I also noticed that it's not completely lined up, the two photos, but they're very similar, so it's still an easy fix with using the masking tool, luckily. And if you wanna change the size of your brush, you can press the two bracket keys, which are next to the P key on your keyboard and it's also by the uh, backslash button. And that will make the uh, brush size bigger and smaller. So I'm feeling pretty good about this, but I do wanna get rid of that door frame that's going down my leg, so I'm just gonna mask over that a little bit more. And I think I'm almost done. So after I'm done with that, I'm gonna copy and merge and paste onto a new file and I'm gonna work on my smile a little bit so I don't look as stoic so I'm just gonna go to liquify under filters and uh, alter the smile feature in liquify which is kind of neat you know if you just have like a slight edit that you want to do to a smile and I feel as though this is a little friendlier versus my uh, more serious face. So I'm happy with that. And I think I'm ready to save. So I'm going to go to save as and then save it in my favorite folder for flying photos. I want to save it as a JPEG so that I can go and share it quickly with the world, but if I wanted to continue to work on it, I could change the format to Photoshop, and then it would still contain the layers. Thank you!